Uh, my name is Carl Halding. Um, I'm uh, leading the research theme on rethinking development at the Stockholm Environment Institute. I was part of the uh, group that uh, developed the framework for the new climate economy. And then uh, further along I've been focusing on a couple of studies we've done in China uh, following various aspects of the Chinese development. Um, the two studies that we have been leading here from, uh, from SEI uh, it's one on the broader coal envelope for China, so the development of, of coal demand and supply. Uh, and the other one uh, is focusing on uh, the broader, the, the greater metropolitan region of, of Beijing, it's called the Jingjingji region, and ambitious plans there for uh, reducing uh, carbon emissions and uh, improving air quality. Um, the the coal envelope study has looked at um, the diff has, has reviewed different uh, projections for demand for coal and supply of coal in China, and it points towards a growing gap between supply and demand, uh, which is uh, very troubling for Chinese economic development. The Jinjingji study has uh, reviewed uh, a, a initiative by. The Chinese leadership, the current leadership under President Xi Jinping, uh, to hold up the Beijing, the broader Beijing region, as a development template for urbanization in China. So we have followed uh, the plans and looked upon how realistic they are. Um, the, the economic miracle in China started off with in light industry and toys and things like that, where China had a comparative advantage. But uh, in the la last uh, 15 years, it switched over to heavy manufacturing, very energy intensive and resources intensive heavy manufacturing. And that's an area where China actually doesn't have comparative advantage. And that has led to, um, to accelerating um, emissions of, of carbon dioxide, for example, and uh, very in resources intensive development that has not been good for China and not good for the world. Yeah, the Jingjingji is a very interesting region in, in China, and that's uh, particularly because the Hebei province, which is the province surrounding Beijing and, and, and Tianjin, the two, two big cities, is um, producing one-eighth of steel output in the world. And they were a mi fairly minor producer as late as uh, early 1990s. So the, there is a, a remarkable boom in steel production capacity in that very province that is global scale. And that's a development that's been driven by, largely by subsidies, uh, Chinese subsidies. So um, it's, um, it's Im very important for China to structure away from, to restructure from that type of, of heavy manufacturing pathway into something where they could, bu could combine um, value added with more labor intensive and, and uh, type, type of, of uh, economic activity.